Yep, it's 3 p.m. and it's time for dinner with Nanny Bubby. And this week is barbecue summer tournament dessert week. And even though I never make desserts, rarely do I make desserts, I decided that I was in the mood to actually make desserts for all of you. So today we are making what I call a patriotic holiday berry trifle. And what's kind of cool about that is that um, there are so many patriotic holidays that you can make this for because it ends up being red, white, and blue. And so you've got Labor Day at the end of, um, or at the beginning of September, you have Memorial Day at the end of May, you have July 4th, you have July 14th, which is Flag Day. Then in November, you have Veterans Day. And you know, just for the fun of it, it's really great to have a red, white, and blue dessert, especially something that you can make ahead and put in your refrigerator if you're doing a barbecue. So one of the tips and tricks that I really believe in is that if you're actually barbecuing the main course, you really need to make sure that the side dishes and even the, hey there, Sue Schwartz Plattner, how are you, Schwar um, Schwartzbacher? That's a, that's a mouthful, Sue. So Sue Plattner is here, Randy Marvin is here. Hey Randy, it's been a long time since we've seen you. Everybody's starting to find us now. And so I believe that our side dishes are great if they are made ahead and cooked in the oven or made ahead and just, placed on the barbecue for just a few minutes. Happy Monday to you as well, Judy. And um, definitely desserts. Desserts are something that should be pre-made unless you're doing something like s'mores around a, a fire pit. But this time of year, you do not need a 400 or 600 degree barbecue as well as a fire pit going, right? So s'mores are for um, the upstairs, um, or not upstairs, s'mores are for <laughs> upstairs because I just heard somebody walking upstairs, um, are for the winter or for when you go into the mountain area during the summer, s'mores are a great treat, but not in Las Vegas during the summer. So we're gonna start with an angel food cake, which you can see right here. The first thing we're gonna do, and it's pre-made, so you, if you like to make angel food cake, all the better. Hey there, Heather. But if you don't, then we're just gonna buy an angel food cake and we're gonna start by making a syrup. So let's start by making a simple syrup. Turning this on. And let me show you, let me turn this so that we can see. There we go. Happy Monday to everybody. So we're going to take a quarter of a cup of water we're going to take a quarter of a cup of lemon juice and we're making a syrup that we are going to put onto the sides of each of the angel food cakes. So let me turn this up one more and, um, and then we're gonna take the sugar, which is a quarter of a cup of sugar. And we're gonna sprinkle that in and we're gonna turn this into a lemony, wonderful syrup. Hey mom, how are you? Thank you for being here. I love it when I have both my mom and my sister here. It's so much fun. So, okay. So we're gonna let this dissolve. We're gonna keep it going. And the next step that we're gonna do is we're going to take the angel food cake and we're gonna slice it. So let me just move you back here and get onto the cutting board. Just kind of move you back a little bit. There we go. And Let's open this up. So the next step is that as that dissolves, we are going to slice the angel food cake and we're gonna put that syrup on all the sides of the angel food cake. And I think I might grab a plate, maybe Megan, our intern, can grab a plate for me. Because as I cut it and syrup it, there we go, all out of there. As I cut it and syrup it, let's see. There we go, thank you. You know, the thing about angel food cake is it's very sticky. It's a very sticky cake, and I need a serrated knife. Okay, this is dissolving. There we go. Thank you very much. Okay, so let's slice this angel food cake just in nice thin slices. At the end of the day, what we're going to do is we're going to make little cubes. But before we cut this into cubes, there we go. We are going to slather this fabulous syrup, this lemony syrup, right onto each side of our angel food cake. 
and then after we've done that we're going to slice it into cubes pour it back onto this plate get it off the cutting board because we have to prepare our strawberries and our blueberries so let me just cut through all this so we're going to talk about strawberries in just a minute we're going to talk about some of the things i've told you in the past many months ago when we first started meeting like this and i just want to review it because so many of you are new to the show and you've missed a lot of tips and tricks and i'm reminded of that because hey frank there you are nice to see you thanks for being here um, my mom said hello to my daughter marla thank you mom and let's see who else is here anybody oh tawny hey tawny nice to see you thanks for being here so let's see if i missed anybody let me scroll back up okay sue platner's here and we're all good okay i'm all caught up so i never get so many comments as what i got when i start talking about parchment paper and aluminum foil and how to make absolutely sure that your aluminum foil does not touch your food and to always line with parchment because aluminum is very toxic when they talk about getting heavy metals out of our bodies and a heavy metal cleanse it really is because you want to get that aluminum and some of the other metals out of your system but aluminum is number one and I get so much feedback on that. And when we talked about that last week, I began thinking about it and began to think to myself that it's time that we revisit um, EWG's website on the Dirty Dozen and the Clean uh, 15, I think it's called, the Dirty Dozen and the Clean 15. And so what I'm gonna do is tell you that um, strawberries are number one item on the dirty dozen meaning that you cannot eat strawberries unless they are organic because they really pick up all of the pesticides in the environment and what holds the most toxic part of those pesticides is the seeds in strawberries and as you know the seeds if i just take this and show this to you let me show so those seeds you cannot separate a strawberry from its seeds it's impossible yet everything that is in the water and in the soil and in the earth sticks into those seeds so your number one item on the dirty dozen is strawberries so you have to make absolutely certain that if you're going to eat strawberries and certainly preparing strawberries for your youngins that you want to make sure that those strawberries are always organic so let's start let's start brushing each side of this with this fabulous lemony syrup. I wanna make sure that I have put everything in, I, because there's almond that goes in this and I just feel like I forgot the almond. Um, well, I'm telling you, nope, no almond. Okay, I'm just looking for the almond extract. I'm sure it'll show up somewhere. Okay, so let me go back and let me keep showing you. Let me turn you here so you can see um, the pot and see what I'm doing here. So let me grab my dirty dozen and let me read it to you. I'm going to show it up. In fact, maybe Megan, if Megan doesn't mind, if you can come and perhaps you can hold up this dirty dozen like this. I don't know if you can, if you can all see that. And there is the list. Now we're going to post this if it's not already there. We're going to post this today in gather and on the nanny bubby page so that you can all have it plus the link to the ewg website where you can download both the dirty dozen and the clean 15 and as you can see on this list strawberries are the number one whoops can we move in so they can see it yep strawberries is the number one item on the dirty dozen so whether you're buying frozen strawberries here just put it right here because i'm going to read off to them just a few there you go perfect so there's strawberries are the number one dirtiest thing unless they're organic hey teresa nice to see you um and uh, lucy is here who knew again i learned something well thank you so much lucy yes that's why you know it, it, i was reminded of this and I think that my newsletter coming out is actually going to have this information in it with a link for you to download a um, camera savvy picture so that when you go to the grocery store, you can have the Dirty Dozen and the Clean 15. So whether you are buying um, uh, frozen strawberries to put in your smoothies or your power drinks in the morning, 
um, or, or fresh. Absolutely, the best money you'll ever spend is that extra money you're gonna pay for strawberry, um, organic strawberries. So the next thing, again, that you wanna make sure is organic, number two on that list is spinach. So again, if you're making a power smoothie in the morning, you've gotta make sure that your strawberries, frozen or fresh, and your spinach is organic. Critical, because you are drinking a power smoothie in the morning to be healthy, but you are not doing yourself any health, um, effici you know, any health, I don't know, benefit if those two things especially are not organic because they are number one and number two on the dirty list, okay? All right, number three, kale, collard, and mustard greens. They grow so close to the earth and they're, they're very green, just like the spinach. Teresa said, um, the list is already on. Thank you so much. I'm so glad it already posted. Sometimes you're never sure if Facebook actually gets there. Okay, so got almost all of this on. Number four are nectarines. Five is apples and six is grapes. Seven is cherries, eight is peaches, nine is pears. So those are a lot of the stone fruits with the exception of apples, pears, and grapes, but almost all of your stone fruits you need to make sure are organic, although they're a bit down the list. Ah, oh, no, I just dropped a whole piece. If we get it up really fast, I can just slice the back side that hit the floor. Tell me which side that was. This this is what, just this, yeah. just the, that? Yes, oh, good that. for us. Okay, it landed on its side. That's a good thing, okay. Um, and then, let's finish. Okay, so we're almost finished. And what we're going to do now is we're going to cut this in, um, which is really great that this is all slathered. Hey, Tawny Bennett again. Linda Wade is here. Hey, Linda, how are you? Okay, so we're gonna take these and we're gonna cut these in cubes. I'm hoping that you can see this. We're just gonna cut down and then, now this is really a rustic dessert, meaning that we just throw these cubes in, nothing is beautified. It's just all a very rustic, homemade looking, and it's great to have at your barbecue. So I would also tell you that the main trifle that I love the most is a custard trifle. But you know, making custard, even if it's refrigerated, to me just spells winter. It's just very thick. It's very warming, even if it's been kept in the refrigerator. It's a very warming dessert to me. So this I really like because it's made with cream cheese and whipped cream which to me is so much lighter and so much better uh, for this time of year and certainly for a barbecue. Ah, oh, Brenda Berman is here. Hey, Brenda, so nice to see you. So happy you're joining us. Um, and so my aunt always, always used to, I know Brenda thinks I'm, I'm talking about her mom, who's also my aunt, but I'm talking about um, on my other side of the family. My aunt used to always make a trifle with homemade custard and vanilla wafers and she used to put in um, strawberries and raspberries and the warm custard. And even though it was refrigerated, she always made it during the holidays in December, which I absolutely loved. But this time of year, we are gonna stick with something really cool. And I think whipped cream is just so cool and so fabulous. So that's what we're doing. So I squished the idea of using the custard trifle and we're going with this very light. And also, um, when I do make that other trifle, if I don't use vanilla wafers, I use pound cake. And again, pound cake is very heavy. Um, and so I prefer not to use that in the summer. I like this whole idea of angel food cake, which is very much like strawberry shortcake. So there is the philosophy as to why I'm doing this trifle with whipped cream and cream cheese and angel food cake. And there we go. Okay, so a few more cubes. We're just gonna take these all now and throw them right onto the plate for use at a different time in just a few minutes. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna haul these strawberries. Now, the next thing that is on that list are uh, bell peppers. So pears, from pears, which I did mention, let, let me wash my hands here, to bell peppers. 
you really want to make sure that your bell peppers are also um, organic, right? That's on the Dirty Dozen list. Then celery and then tomatoes is number 12. Now, because I'm using blueberries, and tomorrow I'm using strawberries and raspberries, I will tell you that I wanted to see where they fell on the list. And this is just the extended list of the Dirty Dozen. Oh, it's upside down. <laughs> the extended list of the Dirty Dozen. And raspberries are number 22 and blueberries are number 16. So they themselves fall onto the Dirty Dozen list, not the Clean 15. So I will talk to you about the Clean 15 just really quickly, but let me get my strawberries into a row here. Hold on just a minute. And so let me tell you about the Clean 15. The Clean 15 are those things that you can actually use that you don't have to worry about whether or not they're organic. It doesn't make any difference. And so those would be avocados, sweet corn, pineapple, and some of those things. Anyway, before I keep going, do you guys all use this, these hullers for the strawberries? It's amazing, right? We'll blow through these so quickly. It'll be awesome. Um, so just asking if you use them, somebody tell me if you use them. Okay, so, all right, so clean 15, avocados, sweet corn, because you know the sweet corn is hulled, the avocados are skinned, pineapple is skinned, um, onions and papaya. These are the clean 15, these are the things that if you want to save the money along the way, these are the things that you do not have to worry about whether or not they are organic or not, which is good to know. Even EWG, um, which stands for, we look up what EWG stands for because it escapes me. Environmental Working Group, I think is what it is. Then they are a nonprofit group. Let me know if I'm wrong about that. They're a nonprofit group that does all kinds of research on, it is Environmental Working Group, um, that does all kind of research on you know the benefits of organic, non-organic, and toxins in our environment and in our food. Because listen, our food is medicine and it's also poison, right? If you're eating the wrong things, you're eating things that have been endangered with pesticides, then your food is not your medicine, your food becomes your poison. And so it's best for all of us to avoid that. And that really is my passion, is to educate and help all of us eat clean, eat eat what we can to be as healthy as we can while at the same time making fabulous food, fabulous recipes, bringing our family together, grow, cook, gather healthily, if that's a word. <laughs> okay, uh, Lucy said, what a great gadget. Yes, uh, oh really? Oh my God, this is amazing. Like digs right in, pulls right out. It's just absolutely fantastic. Okay, what else? Let's see, Brenda Berman said hello. Uh, Tony Bennett, Frank said hello, hello. Randy Marvin is still watching, so this is all good. All right, so we're getting through it. And as soon as we get through all these, um, so let's, let's continue down the Clean 15 list. We've got um, papaya, sweet peas, which I love, eggplant. So, I mean, I grow my own eggplant, but um, you don't have to. It, you can just buy it right off the shelf and it doesn't need to be organic and don't pay a, a penny more for it um, if it is because one way or the other, it, it doesn't matter. Um, asparagus doesn't matter. Broccoli, cabbage doesn't matter. Um, cauliflower does not matter. Mushrooms doesn't matter. They're mold no matter what. <laughs> they're, they're, they're a moldy, mildewy thing, whether they're organic or not. Honeydew melon, cantaloupe, those are the clean 15. So you can count on not having to go to the grocery store and seek out, like today, I was looking for peppers at the grocery store and I could not find organic peppers, so I didn't buy them. Um, strawberries, I went searching all over the store to find where they'd move the organic strawberries for, to especially since these are on the number one list, right? I mean, these are the number one most important thing. Do not put a strawberry in your mouth unless it's organic. I'm dead serious and certainly don't give it to your kids, right? Your grandkids and anybody you love. Okay, here we go. All right, any questions on the Dirty Dozen and the Clean 15? So we are gonna send out a newsletter in the weeks to come uh, with a 
uh, photo size view of the Clean 15 and the Dirty Dozen so that you can download the photo into your phone. And that way, when you go to the grocery store, you'll be able to always have it and you'll be able to take a look at what you should buy organic and what you can. Also want to mention to you, I will not be here on Wednesday because I booked a doctor's appointment a year ago. And so this is one of those annual appointments. And who knew a year ago, July, that I would ever be here with all of you every day. And so all of a sudden that showed up in my phone and I went, oh my gosh, why would I have made that at two in the afternoon? And the answer is, I didn't know you were gonna be here. I didn't know I was gonna be here. So it's just one of those appointments I can't change. So I really do apologize. And then on Friday, I am leaving for vacation for a week. So while I, I got this gadget at Williams Sonoma and Sir Latov has one too. Um, and while I am away, I am going to be driving to Aspen, Colorado on Friday. And so by the time I figured out, by the time I get to Grand Junction, it will be three o'clock hour time. And I'm gonna pull the winner of the summer barbecue tournament dessert posting winners. So all of you get your summer barbecue tournament dessert posts in together and tell us what you're making, tell us why you're making it, give us a little synopsis on what it is. And um, that way when I get to Grand Junction, Colorado, I will be able to pick the winner while I'm there. I'll come on and I'll be so excited. The only thing is, is the winner of desserts and then the winner of, um, well, I guess the winner of cocktails will be able to, to cook with me. But Lindsay is not able to cook with me this week since she won last week's tournament. And, um, and so she will cook with me when I get back. She can't do it this week. And uh, whoever wins desserts will cook with me when I get back. And then whoever wins cocktails, I will be back and we will cook probably all that week. We'll have three people cooking with me, which is a great way to come back. I'll be very excited to do that. So everybody clear on the schedule? Let's see, um, yep, okay. Everybody asks where is that? And let's get these last holes. I don't like the look of that strawberry. So down the hatch it goes. Okay, okay. So now I'm just going to rough chop these strawberries just as neatly as I can. Um, and yet, then again, sometimes too neat just kind of ruins the look of this because it's really meant just to be just more of a rustic dessert. Now, I love things that are really perfected and artistic and on the platter perfectly and all lined up, etc. cetera. Um, but I think for this one, with the cubes, there's no way to do anything with them except to just lay them in. And so that's what we're gonna do once we cut through all these strawberries. And then we're gonna layer. We've got the strawberries, we're gonna have the blueberries, we're gonna mix the whipping cream and the cream cheese and the sugar real quick with the uh, quarter teaspoon of almond extract. I know that's what that almond extract is for. And then we'll be all ready to start layering. And I'll be so excited to show you, once you do this little bit of prep, how easy it is to put this together. We'll stick it into a um, into the refrigerator. You'll see that we will layer it, red, white, and blue, and you will be able to use it. I'm sorry, we missed July 4th, but desserts weren't up yet for July 4th, that you can use it for any of your summer barbecues. It will be so fabulous. Okay, all right, okay. Cutting away, just a rough slice, nothing too perfect. I've got some extra strawberries in there. I might slice like this perfect little strawberry. I might slice this off to the side really perfect for purposes of putting it on the very top. So there's that and let's see, here's another one. I think I'll take three. So just for the top, it should look a little more perfect, I think. There we go. You probably can't even see me doing that, but I'm just gonna put these off to the side, okay. So just rough chopping again. So who had a fabulous weekend? And tell me what you did. Tell me what all of you did. Just curious to know. I spent 
So I have a packing disorder. I have a lot of disorders, by the way. But one of the one of the absolute things that I have that everybody will tell you I have in my family, and I drive them all crazy, um, is that I have a packing disorder. Meaning that when I go somewhere for a weekend, I bring enough clothes for at least a month and a half. And no matter what I do, I can't stop saying, oh, I'm just gonna throw this in just in case I need it, just in case I want it. Oh, and these extra three pairs of shoes, I need to take these too. And so what I have done over the years as I have taken pictures of every outfit, made lists of everything I need to take, and then I hang it all up, and then I get it in the suitcase at least a week before I leave. Because if I don't, then I spend the next week saying, oh, I love this outfit, I'm gonna pack it, and I'm gonna take it too. So I spent the weekend, and if you saw my phone, you would see pictures of every outfit I'm wearing every night to dinner, and you will see the exact outfit I'm wearing to go fly fishing, and the exact outfit that I'm wearing to go um, down the river, because I don't know who, who thinks about what outfits they wear when they go rafting down a river, but I mean, that's how crazy I am. Because if I don't, then I pack too much, so I have to say, okay, what will I want to wear down the river? Okay, so help my niece on Sunday with her pop-up shop at the Rose Bowl flea market. Cool, I love that. There's so many pop-up shops. I have a friend, Lucy, who um, has a kid's website for uh, educational things, and she just put her stuff up at a pop-up pop shop in Delaware, and oh my God, she rocked it over the weekend, so that's really good to hear. Um, and Teresa went to a baseball game in um, Reno Aces versus the Las Vegas Aviators. It was 97, but uh, Las Vegas beat Reno, so it was 97 in Reno. That is a lot. That is a lot for Reno, isn't it? But we beat ya, gotta love that. How many of you went to Allegiant Stadium to see Garth Brooks? I had to pass. I just couldn't do, I just couldn't do it. I just could not do it. We gave our tickets to a tenant that we have and he was very happy and that's it. So, how many of you made it to Allegiant Stadium to see Garth Brooks? And what'd you think? What'd you think about parking at Allegiant Stadium? <laughs> That's the big question of the day, right? Okay, so these strawberries are all ready to go, and now I'm just gonna turn you really quickly, and let's go into the mixer. I don't know if you can see this for sure, so let me just check my, my own recipe because I get nervous, and everybody does when you're cooking. Sometimes you forget the most important thing. So let's see, beat the remaining two-thirds of a cup sugar cream cheese with a mixer on medium speed until smooth and light. Add the cream and beat on medium high until smooth and the consistency of whipped cream. Okay, ready? Let's get that there. There we go. Can you turn that just a little bit more? Oh, oh, okay, cool. Megan's gonna do that. She's gonna be the camera girl for us, so. Okay, get this open. This is room temperature. I bought it this morning and left it out on the countertop. So let's see. So once this is all together, it's gonna to be really quite, quite great and easy to assemble. And that's the key. Okay, there we go. All right, so we're just gonna, I like it to drop in and here we go, there we go. There we go, so that went in very, very clean. No reason to scrape this because it just, sometimes when it's room temperature, it just doesn't come off very clean, but. This one was very clean. Okay, there we go. Okay, and we're gonna lower this. Raise this, actually. We're gonna put it on low. And we're gonna start cleaning. Can you see inside the bowl? Okay. And add the sugar. Turn it up a little bit.
like those stiff peaks. Actually, yep, beautiful. Very, very nice. Okay. Now, I believe the one thing left to do is put in that quarter of a teaspoon of the almond extract, which, believe it or not, I need to adjust that recipe because um, it does not say add it. So I will adjust that. Here's a quarter of a teaspoon of the almond extract. There we go. How delicious is that? Okay. That just adds a little bit of a depth of flavor. So we'll turn this back on. Okay. Hey, Brenda Mills, how are you? I know you went to Garth Brooks um, the other night, so how did you find it? Okay, all right. Let's take this right out, because it's very hard to kind of, there we go. Do you want to push that back for me? Thank you. Yeah, just pull it. Yeah, there we go. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, here we are. Okay, yep, it was fun. I know, it was great. Okay, so now we're gonna layer, and this is what we've been waiting for. A lot of prep got us to this point. We've got our blueberries, which I also, by the way, all these were sprayed, organic or not, with my food grade hydrogen peroxide. I let it sit for a few minutes. I did see some white foam up, just like when you have a sore in your hand, the bacteria foams up with the food grade hydrogen peroxide. I did it to my blueberries and I did it to the strawberries. And now we're gonna take our trifle bowl and we have to wipe my hand though because I don't wanna get it dirty. And we are going to start. So let me see, I wanna remind myself, how do I, the great news about these recipes is that when I do them live for you and I have to read through them, it's like doing them a second or third time and I realize what the recipe may have missed as I was writing it up, like that almond extract. Like I left that out as I was writing it up. So anyway, arrange half the cake cubes in the bottom. So we're gonna start with cake cubes. There we go. And this one got a little bit dry, so let's Get a little bit of this and slather it on top. Might put this over here just so we can put a little more on if we need to. So we're gonna do the cake cubes. And just put them all onto the bottom. Just very roughly done, as you can see. There we go. And then we are going to sprinkle with a, la a layer, let's see, bottom. Okay, layer of blueberries, and you wanna push these blueberries to the side of the bowl because what you wanna make sure that you've got, these are leaking, just give these a shake. Get all that water out. Get a paper towel, hold on. Okay, all right, I'm back. Okay, so what you wanna do is make sure that you push the blueberries to the side of the bowl because what you want to do is you want to show how you have a red, white, and blue layer. And that's what makes it so patriotic. So as a matter of fact, frequently what you want to do is push the, the angel food cake to the edge and then the blueberries so that they see white and then the blue. But we'll do that on the next layer. Okay. There we go. All right, and then next, we're going to put the cream cheese mixture, just a dollop of the cream cheese. So let's start layering. I think I could use a little more. I think I need a bigger spoon. We're just going to... Now, the reason that I also prefer to do the cream cheese and... Um, whipped cream layer is because the custard is actually yellow, right? So it doesn't make that same um, impact of this is very white where the custard is definitely 
um, a yellow color and it just doesn't make the same impact. So that's why I prefer this also for this. So let me get down in here and just get a little of this out. Just get all that mixed up on the bottom here. Okay. And okay. And just let's spread that evenly. There we go. So Megan is always very lucky that she gets to take all of this home. We are not big dessert eaters and I'm really honestly just making this for all of you because it is dessert week. I'm gather with Nanny Bubby, right? Okay. So we'll spread that out. Sometimes fingers are best. Okay, there we go. So the next layer is uh, layer the remaining cake on top, oh, wait a minute. Top of the layer of strawberries. Let me take the layer of strawberries. Just put them, again, push them off to the side. There's a strawberry that could be broken up, placed to the side, placed over the top. There we go. There we go. Now, are you starting to see the red, white, and blue? Yep. Uh, oh, limoncello, yeah. Grand Marnier is really good with this. Yes, instead of the quarter teaspoon of almond extract, we could have used limoncello. We could have used Grand Marnier, which I love. I love orange and um, strawberries, so good. Okay, so now we're gonna take our cubes of the angel food cake and put it on there. Um, let's see. Amaretto, that's a great idea too. Who, who started that thread? Let me see. Um, I will make this and may drizzle a flavor liqueur on the cake. So it looks good, yes. That's a great idea. Okay, and then that's where everybody started saying what would be great. So yes, instead of the lemon juice, we could have used the limoncello, we could have used the Grand Marnier. Of course, if you're making this for kids, which of course, why wouldn't I? Um, you have to be very careful about all of that, so. Um, you know, when you're cooking with it, you cook out the alcohol, but when you're dousing this all over a cake, it's not quite so um, easy. Okay, so here we go. And now we're gonna layer again with the blueberries off to the side. There we go. So this week is dessert week on Gather with Nanny Bubby. So all of you go in to gather, place your favorite desserts, post pictures. If you're posting old pictures or a recipe, you have to add a narrative, let us know what, what it is, why you're posting an old recipe card or what it means to you and all of that. Okay, on to this we go with the blueberries and then we are going to add Another layer of the red, white, and blue. This is our white as well as the cake. There we go. Just spread it all out. How's that looking so far? So I'm gonna go over the Dirty Dozen, the Clean 15 one more time before we close out today. there. All right, so now we're going to add our last layer of the strawberries. We're going to finish this up with a layer of the final bread that we have. There we go. Got a lot left over. Sometimes it builds and sometimes you run out. It's so crazy how it Sometimes it just works out, okay? And now we're gonna take our crumbled bread. I would love to douse this in um, limoncello, like you said. In fact, you could take uh, your bread out in three different sections and do one with limoncello, one with Grand Marnier, uh, one with amaretto, right? There we go. Okay, and so now the last layer right on top of the bread. Look how beautiful that is. Just gorgeous. We need to take a beauty shot outside of this. And let's take this. Just 
spread it on top. Make sure I get a nice even spread. And you know what's great about this? You don't have to worry about really cutting it. You just leave a serving spoon in it. Everybody comes and just helps themselves to a nice big spoonful. There we go, hold on. Let me get the last remaining whipped cream right out of the bowl here, right on top. Okay, that actually hurts my hand. So let me just take this and there we go. Okay, all right, so now that's done. We're gonna take our last remaining strawberries and I think I'm just gonna pile them right in the center here, like that. Just a few right in the middle. And I'll tell you what's gonna be fabulous. Just a, I do not have it here, but I'm going to use basil instead, but a great stick of mint would be so fabulous on this. So I'm just gonna take these really gently, well sliced strawberries and put them around the outer edge. There we go. Move these around beautifully. They're slippery. There we go. Okay. How's that look? It looks like it's snowed on top of here, doesn't it? Okay, there we go. Let me wipe these hands. And now I'm just gonna substitute basil for what would be mint, because I didn't think to go out and get that mint, but I can just take one little sprig of this and let's just show you how great this would look right in the middle with mint. Basil smells so good. But I do have to say it smells like pot in the 60s. I don't know why, but it just does. Okay, so let's see, did I get all this? Oh, there's more strawberries to be had. How did I miss all these? Okay, right around the outer edge. There we go. There we go. Just very rustic, doesn't have to be perfect. Just beautiful. And I will replace this basil with mint when I send it out the door. And there you go. Okay, how's that look? Red, white, and blue all around. Great. Okay, that's my summer dessert barbecue special, for at least for Monday. Tomorrow I have another one that is one of my favorites. So we will go to that. Just a couple of things. Number one, I wanna remind you about, that this is posted on Nanny Bubby and Gather, the Clean 15 and the Dirty Dozen. These, the Dirty Dozen are the things you absolutely must eat that are organic. They are strawberries, spinach, kale, and collard and mustard greens, nectarines, apples, grapes, cherries, peaches, pears, peppers, you know, bell peppers, celery, and tomatoes. There is your dirty dozen right here. And then the clean 15, these are the 15 things that it doesn't matter if you buy them organic or not. Just repeating them out loud for all of you in case you're all going um, uh, to the grocery. And Teresa says she just gave her trifle dish away. Oh, you gotta go back and get one. Honestly, I had never had one in my life. And once I got one, I actually had to have two. So now I have two of them and I'm so glad that I do. Okay, avocados, sweet corn, pineapple, onions, papaya, sweet peas, eggplant, asparagus, broccoli, cabbage, kiwi, cauliflower, mushrooms, honeydew, and cantaloupe. Those are the things you do not have to really worry about being organic because they are just as good for you and not unhealthy for you all the way around. And so that's it for today. Just a reminder, tomorrow we're making a strawberry raspberry apple cake for your summer barbecue tournament desserts. And on Wednesday, made a doctor's appointment a year ago because I had no idea back in July of last year that you and I would be here together every day. And that's at two o'clock, so I'm sorry about that. On Thursday, I'm making plans to have a special guest. I'm waiting to hear from her. She's from New Zealand. And I think we may be able to do a Zoom call with her 
from New Zealand and I'm waiting to hear from her. I hope it comes together. Um, when I texted her this morning, she was asleep because it was three in the morning there. So let's see how that comes together. And then Friday, I am going to be gone Friday through Friday. So I'm gonna be gone for an entire week, but I am going to be um, picking our dessert winner on Friday when I'm in Grand Junction, Colorado. I'm excited to do that. And then uh, when I'm traveling back, I will pick the cocktail winner and we will schedule all those things once I get back to town. So that's it for today. Love you all so much. Remember on the count of three, one, two, three, go out and spread love like butter. Mwah. Bye everybody.